Training Tuesday show. How are you? I'm Brandon Dempsey. It's so great to see you. you looking, you're looking at our guest today with us, local worship leader Michelle Stokely. Say hi, Michelle. What's up? Hey, there she is. And before we get to Michelle, we want to get to you. Hey, guys, thanks so much for coming in. Jason Wallace, what's up on Periscope? How you doing, brother? Man, I love your fan, and I love it. I love his stuff, too, and you need to follow him at underscore Jason underscore Wallace. What's up? Facebook Live, how you doing today? Who is in the house? Let's go ahead and swipe and invite, please. Let everybody know what is up. Sharice Williams, my lady, how are you? Mustang Sally, thank you, too. Appreciate you guys. What is going on? Who else is in the house today? Let's check on Facebook Live too. And I uh, hope that you guys had a good, did everybody have a good weekend? Uh, Mother's Day. So yeah, Mother's Day. We're going to we're gonna uh, recap a little bit of Mother's Day in a second because we didn't get a chance over the weekend to say hello to all of our awesome moms out there. What's up, Sharice? Keela, what's up? How are you? Keela next is going to be sitting in this chair. Pretty soon you're going to meet her too. Can't wait for that. Uh, Facebook Live, what's going on with you guys? Hope that y'all are doing great. I'm Brandon Dempsey of WorshipTeenTraining.com and Worship Teen Training University, which is also WTTU.co. I'm a follower of Jesus and also CEO of those websites. Teresa Louise, what's going on on Facebook Live? Thank you so much. Hi there. And uh, also, we do this to let you know what we do here at Worship Teen Training University. Those of you guys that are also listening on the playback, Welcome to our audio broadcast and iTunes and those of you watching on video playback. Thanks so much for coming in. And our special members at WTTU. Glad to have you guys. So let's jump into it. Uh, basically, we talk about worship teams, worship leading, and anything that pertains to leading worship in your church. We air like this on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. On Thursdays, we have what is called our Special Training Thursdays, and that is only membership that you can get from us at WTTU.co, and I'm going to get to that in a second, and this, these broadcasts are for you, so we're, we're glad that you guys are here, and uh, I'm excited to have our guest here, Michelle, because we're going to jump into some things. Um, wow, this past weekend was Mother's Day. How was your Mother's Day? I uh, hope that it was great. I mean, we spent time with mom. We spent time with uh, mommy, mommy, which is, you know, my lovely, awesome wife of our two boys. Had a lot of great fun, and it's just neat to see kids. You know, we have a three- and six-year-old, and they make crafts and, you know, cut out stuff and coloring and everything. Um, but also, you know, when, when, in looking at social media, we've seen a lot of what's called mom quotes. So I have a few here to read to you. Mom quotes in, in honor of our mothers and all of our mothers across the country and the world and those that are leading worship in particular. Uh, let's read our first one, shall we? Our first one, mom's quote. This comes from W. Van Der Riet. Uh, she says, me, mom, you're invading my personal space. Mom, well, you came out of my personal space. That makes us even. <laughs> uh, another one by uh, at in in uh me i got an a mom and your friends me but i got an f but half my class failed as well mom i don't care about other people's grades <laughs> so you guys remember that one uh this one was from emily zaki she says my mom frequently refers to cargo shorts as purse pants that that's my personal favorite right there uh last one comes from katie kennedy she says uh mom uh, her mom says, sorry, can you order your dad this shirt from the Gap website? Me, sure. Mom, oh no, it's 10.30 p.m. Aren't they closed? <laughs> so we have a lot of fun with our moms. Um, I know my mom would be like, what's a cell phone? You know, she's like way, anyway. But love our moms. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. We have a lot of laugh and fun uh, because you guys make us laugh and, and you're blessing to us. Let's get right to what's coming up next on WTTU on this Tuesday show and Thursday show. I want to remind you to follow us on Snapchat. If you're not already, mm, man, you are missing some great content because we have piano stuff that we are going to be doing later on, uh, this week. Uh, we're actually doing some more filming today, which I'm not going to actually talk more about that because I don't want to spill the beans. Neil Baker, what's up? How are you, bro? Good to see you, too, on Facebook Live. And uh, Neil's one of our own here at Worship Teen Training. Good to see you. The Worship Teen Training Worship Songwriting Contest is back. My goodness. Um, I'm putting out the links to all the things that are coming. 
Uh, and also, this is brought to you by our huge, big, big sponsor, Shure Microphones. Thank you, Shure Microphones, for their Motive line. Uh, you want to be sure to get in your song. Uh, guys, listen to us by iTunes. Got to get them in because we know you guys are writing songs. Worship leaders out there, please do that before May the 26th. And on May the 24th, we got an awesome webinar by our good friend, Dwayne Moore, who's going to be stopping by. Can't wait. Uh, man, he's just a fantastic dude, and he runs nextlevelworship.com, so be sure to check him out. He's going to be talking about how can we encourage and nurture our upcoming worship leadership in our younger generations. Also, coming next on the program, wow, we have a jam-packed week next week and week after for you. Get this, on all the three next coming Thursdays, March 18th, March 25th, June the 1st, check it out. And again, you've got to be a member to see this, so you've got to sign up at WTTU.co. We have Carl Albrecht talking about worship drumming coming this Thursday right here. I can't wait. Carl's going to be sharing with us about some awesome things that we need to understand by learning to let God play through our instrument, meaning how we worship through our instruments Carl is going to be talking about that in regards to worship drumming. Coming up next Thursday is Brothers McClurg. They are awesome. I love this band. They've been out for a few years now. And also, we're going to be doing something with them special in a workshop uh, coming up in Michigan later this fall. But you want to check out next Thursday, the 25th, Brothers McClurg. And then the big, big, big guest. Can't wait. Are you ready for this? Next Thursday, uh, no, not next Thursday, two Thursdays from now, June the 1st, our super, super, super duper special guest who just confirmed last night, Paul Balash is coming on Thursday. I can't wait. So June the 1st, mark your calendars, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Don't miss it. Sign up at WTTU.co to watch it. All right, so today's show, you can get this. If you want to become a member like I just was telling you about, because if you want to see Paul Balash, Brothers McClurg, Look, you know, yeah, you can troll through YouTube videos and you can get what you want and you can try to find out the things that you can, little bits and pieces, but you're not going to get ever dedicated training like this anywhere else on the interweb. So you want to be sure that you sign up for WTTU.co because we have much, much more coming and you can't find it for free. And besides, who's got time for free anyway of all the hours that you spend in front of the computer screen? I know I don't, neither do you, but hey, you're watching this, so thanks. <laughs> so let's get right into today's program. Um, preparation breeds confidence. We are talking about musicians for the Lord. How do we worship through our instruments? That is today's topic. So let's set the stage as worship musicians. It is a great privilege to play music for the Lord, but often it can feel overwhelming, as you know. Uh, lack of confidence, other issues that may be happening. Our guest on Thursday, Carl Albrecht, is going to be sharing the important message about our role as worship musicians and how, with proper preparation and leaning on the Spirit to guide us, can help us bring the confidence that we need. So, without any further ado, to, to <laughs> Out, without any further ado, um, I want to introduce our special guest with us, Michelle Stokely. Michelle is a uh, worship leading assistant pianist that is from New Harvest Church in Greenville, Tennessee, one of our home states. I love it. And uh, she worships at a church that's 50 to 70 people, and she's only been doing this for two years. So we are glad to have her. Let's everybody please welcome Michelle Stokely. How are you, Michelle? Hi. I'm well. How are you doing? So great. It's so good to have you finally. How are you? I'm well. I'm awesome. Doing. <laughs> uh, if you guys don't know, Michelle has been following us now for the past, what, how long now, Michelle? About a year and a half, a little over a year and a half, maybe. About a year and a half, she's blessed us. So thank you so much, Michelle. She follows us on Snapchat uh, and also Twitter and Instagram and uh, she's become a member at WTTU.co. She's taken full advantage of everything, the, the awesome webinars and stuff that she's mentioning she wants to get back to. Uh, so, Michelle, uh, we want to hear from you today because as we're talking about things like confidence, we're talking about things like uh, making music for the Lord, having the Lord do His music through us. Can you tell us a little bit about, first, can we back up, tell us about you. Like, how did you get started in leading worship, playing piano, uh, where you're from, uh, your upbringing, and all that stuff? Um, well, I have spent most of my life 
in music, vocally. I spent 13 years in any choir I could get into. Just a love for singing my whole life. And when I had my encounter with Jesus, worship was something that was very near and dear to my heart. And I was given an opportunity to worship with the praise team. And that is what started me on a praise team. That was just the beginning of it. And I spent six months up front, about six months or so up front, and then the Lord called me to the season of training on the piano. And that's where I'm at now. And that's not something I ever imagined I would be able to do. So if it hadn't been for the Holy Spirit really leading me and guiding me through the process and working perfectionism out of me, because we know there's a difference in perfectionism and excellence. And the Holy Spirit really had to work perfectionism out of me to get me to the point that I'm at now. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that kind of says a lot right there, you know. Yeah. So uh, I love it. Um, so you've been leading worship, uh, assisting worship and worship team for you know two years that you say. Um, what is that like? Uh, I mean, what did you first experience that was like the aha moment first coming into a worship team? Because most worship leaders that are watching this right now are listening. They've been leading worship for maybe anywhere between 5 to 10, 15, 20 years. So for you coming in and just being, you know, Brand new at two years. What's the first thing you experienced that you thought, wow, I didn't see this coming? The first thing I experienced that I didn't see coming? Yeah. The nerves. The nerves. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like a game show. Okay, wait, you got these, these three seconds. You know, uh, The nerves. Talk about, yeah. the, talk about the nerves. What, what happened with the nerves for you? Uh, I found that any time, as long as I was with a group, I was fine. And but once I had to start leading songs on on my own or uh, doing a solo special, I would become extremely nervous and I would shake, and it became very hard for me to hold the microphone steady. And <laughs> the nerves would really kick in any time that it came to me having to do anything solo. Yeah. But it was really easy with the group. But once I had to step out, it, it became very nerve-wracking. <laughs> so, so talk about, like, what was the – can you share an experience with us where you stepped out and, and it just, like, I don't know, uh, was it, like, utter misery, utter, utter fail, or it was like, you know, what, what was that for you? What happened? Uh, I was singing a special, and I – was trying to hold the microphone and I was shaking so so much oh, I would have to use both hands <laughs> just to try to hold the microphone oh. still. And I remember I had a, a break in the vocals and um, in between uh, verse and chorus. And I remember praying, okay, Lord, you're going to have to help me because I can't do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't do this on my own. So I really had to take advantage of my my vocally silent moments in order to <laughs> to pray for help <laughs> just to get through it. So. <laughs> it's like between every breath of the word, it's a prayer, you know. It's, I think that most of us can relate with that. I mean, especially, yeah, most things Sally said break over. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, w once you sing through that break and that happens, uh, I mean, that's just nervous enough. And then you're right, when you're having to hold a microphone, you got these people looking at you, uh, the, tell us, how did you work through that? What was the victory for you? Um, it was realizing that I wasn't singing for people, hmm. that I was singing for God, that I had, I hate to say the word audience, but I had an audience of one. Hmm. And it was putting my focus on where I was singing, that I wasn't singing in a performance, I, it was getting rid of the performance mentality mm. and getting into a state of worship. Mm. And when I could focus on worshiping Jesus 
in not thinking so much about what it was like in the choir when you're standing up in front of people and, you know, just letting myself go into worship mode, not performance mode. That helps tremendously. So do you see, thanks for sharing that, by the way, because that's, it's pretty brave of you and many others to say, hey, this is what happened to me. And I froze up and, you know, not a lot of people talk about these things, but I think it's very healthy because it lets everybody else know, hey, uh, we're just human. So yeah. how do you see the rest of your team? How, do you think the rest of your team, have they come to that, you know, crossing over the line where they, they understand now the difference between worship and performance or maybe not yet or, or what? Uh, we, it, that line has definitely been crossed. Wow. Um, you know, when, when we're up front, it's worship. You know, you know it's, not, um, it's not a performance. Hmm. You know, we're up there to worship. And the people that we have on the team, they all have a worshiper's heart. And that, that I mean, that taking into consideration, that matters. Yeah. Um, that can take you, I think, from the performance to the worship is when you develop a heart for that. Hmm. Because that, that's your joy. That's where you want to be is there in the presence of the Lord worshiping. Yeah. That's amazing. So tell us, like, um, where does worship happen for you? What do you mean exactly? Like when we, like when you're saying that we get in the worship, what what is it? Uh, what is it that maybe um, God brings to mind um, that makes worship happen for you? What does that make sense? What I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, it's the remembrance that. I'm not doing, yeah, I'm up there worship leading for the congregation, but I'm not performing for them. It's keeping my focus on Jesus, and sometimes I, I have to block out what's in front of me and keep that focus on Jesus. Hmm. Um, and if I can do that, that takes me right, that takes me right into it. Yeah. Wow, that's that's great. Um, how many, like within your team, how many are there comprised of females and males? We have three females, um, four including the drummer because she also does vocals. Oh, cool! Wow. Yeah, and we have three men. All right, so it's three and three. Right. Right. Three, three. So. Um, uh, not to, you know, uh, draw sides, guys, but I'm just asking the question. Do you find that uh, men maybe have, uh, have, you, have you, that's, I think a better question is, what are the differences that you see between men and women on a worship team entering into worship? I don't know that I've ever actually noticed much of a difference yeah. between the men and the women, mm. um, because like I said, we all carry a worshiper's heart. Yeah. So I've not really noticed anything, um, any true differences yeah. on our team. And I, I asked that because, I mean, some of the guys like on my team, they're thinking about, okay, uh, you know, whether it be whatever their setup is and what we have to go through in terms of songs and they go through this kind of mechanical mode and I have to say, all right guys, hey, you know, it's okay. This is, we're going to serve the Lord. Uh, the women, um, some of them, um, I would say are more relaxed than the guys. And, but at the same time, the little bit of the nervousness kicks in. So that's what I noticed between the men and women, because I mean, we're all different. So right. that was my question to you is, you know, do you see that kind of same thing, or maybe it's not so? I don't. I don't see it so much. Yeah. Um, the the I, I think be it if if you're on an instrument rather than doing vocals, um, there's a little more to think about. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, because you're trying. Because I know if I'm on the piano, for example. Mm. Um, sometimes I can be a little more focused on what my hands are doing or where I'm going with the music yeah. um, more so than just 
being able to completely focus yeah. in, um, on worship. So sometimes I think maybe being on, being on an instrument might get that. But we, we have, like I said, we have men on our instrument. So, instrumentation of so, drama. so like what that's that's great uh, that's kind of what I'm getting into now what helps you as an instrumentalist let's just say that you're you're playing music in the worship team um, what do you do to keep a I guess maybe a balance between not you know being at your instrument and yet you want to worship but you don't want to be too far out so what do you do to maintain a certain balance uh normally have to relax vocally hmm. because being just a, 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 a pure vocalist, I would put all my focus and energy and everything into my voice mm -hmm. and where I was going and listening for, for any, um, like to be off on the notes at all. And, um, when I'm playing, I have to put some of that focus on what I'm doing on the piano. Yeah. And so I can't, always focus on my vocals. <laughs> so, so the vocals just kind of come out because I'm focusing on, more on what I'm doing on the piano. Yeah. Now, I know this may sound like a silly question to you, to others, but everybody internalizes things differently. So do you, focus, do you tend to focus more on the words when you're playing because maybe you have more time to think about it as you're playing, or do you, do you find yourself thinking more of worship about the Lord when you're singing, because maybe you're thinking more about the words that way, what what happens for you? I, I tend to think about it more when I'm playing. And uh, just because, like I said, it was when it was pure vocals, I would focus a lot more on technique. Yeah, like yeah. It was more performance-based. Right. You know, and when I'm playing, there's so much going on that I can't really um, pull away from it. Mm. I, mm. You know, I, I can't really pull away. Yeah. From the worship aspect of it, or I do mess up. Yeah. Um, so what what helps you get out of the rut? Like when you're maybe you're going through music and you could be playing it or singing it, and you're kind of like, man, my spirit, my heart, this is not working. Um, or it could be something musically that's not working. What do you what do you gravitate to to help pull yourself out of it? Prayer. Right. You mentioned that like in between each of the <laughs> words, <laughs> and yeah, but that's but that's awesome. So how can um, what do you do then when you when you pray? What are some um, things that come to mind that kind of uh, allow God to put you at rest and, and give you that peace that you need? Oftentimes, I just ask to be a vessel. Yeah. Lord, let me, let me be the vessel and help me put myself aside so that you can come through me and play through my hands and sing through my voice and, um, you know, pray for the, for the anointing to be able to do that. Um, because, of course, that's always important. Um, and sometimes I just ask for grace, hmm. <laughs> you know, grace to get, grace to get through it. Yeah, because I know that I need him to help me get through it. Hmm. You know, I don't want to do this completely in and of my in and of myself. So oftentimes it's just asking Lord, Lord, help me. Let me be a vessel. Help me get myself aside. You know, so you can you can do this, and this is you coming through, so that it's you that people hear, not me. Yeah, I love that. That's such a great focus. Um, if you were to sum up your worship team in one challenge for them, what would that one thing be? One challenge? Yeah, if there was like a challenge, uh, it could be spiritual, it can be musical. Um, what's the one challenge you see within your worship team? For for a while, it was wondering um, why the congregation wasn't worship, worshiping mm -hmm. so much and taking it on themselves and saying, yeah. um, maybe we're doing something wrong and trying to work through 
are we doing something wrong? Are we not doing something wrong? This was, this was the challenge to face. It was getting past the worry and the anxiety of, is this us? Is it, is it because of us? Which it's, it's been, it's been worked through. And, but I think that was probably the biggest challenge that I've seen so far. Yeah. I was just trying to push through that because it was a dry spell. And a dry spell can be extremely discouraging. And, you know, trying to overcome discouragement and having perseverance to get through it and remembering the focus of it and not letting the dry spell take away the focus. Love that. Yeah, that's so true. I think for many of us, uh, we we all encounter those dry spells, but I think more importantly, like what you're just mentioning, um, being in that spirit of worship, that's kind of the theme of what I've been hearing you speak throughout the whole time. And I mean, this is awesome because this is a person, Michelle, who gets it. I mean, you've been doing this for two years now, and praise God, and, and not not to say that others don't, it's just that I've worked with musicians and singers that have been maybe doing it for 10 or 15, 20 years, five years, and they're still trying to get past playing, the, keeping their eyes so focused on the chart, they're not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead them, which is the big difference. But uh, it's so refreshing to hear your heart, especially since you've been doing this for such a short time. And I mean, God's just been teaching you, I mean, just oodles of stuff. So, um, man, thanks so much, Michelle, for coming on today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, we, we want to have you come back, Michelle. We want to have um, others of you guys come back as well. Uh, those of you that are interested in being on the show, all you need to do is just email us. That's Brandon at WorstTeamTraining.com or come see us at WTTU.co. Let me just say this before you leave, just to um, encourage you that you are making a difference within your worship team. No matter how that you feel led in one direction, if you are confident in Christ, it, it doesn't. There's a big difference difference between confident in your instrument, or confident in your abilities, versus confident confidence in Jesus. Because the music side will always come. That's something that you can always work on in your own practice and when you rehearse as a team. But the one attribute that God gives us to rehearse and practice daily is to practice a praise and is the rehearsal of worship when your feet hit the ground every day. And I identify with, uh, and I think a lot of leaders identify, Michelle, to you, uh, wondering when they're leading worship, yeah, but is anyone, they don't look like they're singing, they don't look like they're worshiping. Uh, let's put that, let's just put that whole concern to the rest so that you guys can understand we can all agree that worship depends on God. It does not depend on you. No matter what you think your abilities are, and you may think you're the greatest singer, greatest player, whatever, uh, or you may have the greatest heart, uh, watch out because then you're, you're, you're soon going to fall. It's the dependency upon the Lord Jesus. That's what leads us all into worship, not our abilities and not even um, as what we're joking about earlier, not the safety in numbers either, but it's your confidence in the Lord Jesus. So, uh, Michelle, thank you so much again for coming on and sharing your heart and your, your background and your team with us today. Well, thank you for having me. Awesome. <laughs> She's so sweet. Uh, I love it. And so, guys, if you want also to find out more about what we do here at worshipteentraining.com, we have workshops that come to you for your worship team. And you can find us at worshipteentraining.com slash workshops. And we do that. Myself can come to your church, work with your worship team on a customized weekend, Friday and Saturday, sitting with you, with your vocalists, with your band members, and talking about these spiritual, biblical things that we're doing this. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, we've got a lot of fans for you right now, Michelle, everyone on Periscope, Keela, Jason, and others are saying, hey, thank you, Terry. Uh, they're all saying thank you. So thanks for that, you guys. Y'all are awesome. Uh, Michelle, thank you for being here. And uh, we can't wait to have you guys back this Thursday. Remember, this coming Thursday, Carl Albrecht. The next week, Brothers McClurg. Following 
Paul Balazs. Paul Balazs is going to be with us on June the 1st, so make sure that you sign up for a membership to watch all these fantastic broadcasts, wttu.co. We love you, and we'll see you guys very soon next